Saturday morning at the lab, we're carrying on with the install of these new GTX 2867Rs on our K12, might as well have lots of numbers, 850 horsepower K12 March, 850 horsepower is debatable, 520 kilowatts at hubs, did, was measured, got proof, so there you go, how's that for a bunch of numbers for first thing in the morning? Or maybe evening for you guys. Now, the previous installation, I had the tailpipes, exhaust pipes, not that there's much, they're only this long, this is probably one and a half meters of pipe, um, bolted directly to the turbos with no flexible couplings or anything like that. Uh, and actually there was, there was nothing supporting anything. It was directly onto the turbo and that's it, it just hung there. And that was okay it was, it was actually terrible but it worked what it did do obviously as you would expect is give these bolts a very hard time so i had to keep an eye on those make sure they didn't um, stretch and then work loose and same with the bolts that hold the turbine onto the manifold so seeing as we're uh fixing things making it better we now have some bellows in here and that won't need any support here anymore at all well, it didn't before anyway um, but we can hard mount this here and not risk fatiguing everything at that end from the chassis flexing and grabbing hold of this and and doing this with it I posted up a, a short on facebook and it's gone off it's had over 5,000 views i was joking i said now we can have vectored thrust exhaust now that's not how i would do it i'm i'm, I'm totally not going to but if you were going to do it you'd have a a Y piece here with a flapper valve in it and you'd have a pipe out each side wherever it is mid vehicle whatever and so going straight ahead you'd have the flapper valve straight ahead if you wanted to turn I have to think now to the left you'd put the flapper valve to the left side to blank it off so that the exhaust goes out the right hand side so that you get the thrust that way to help you turn left the 10 pounds of thrust or whatever you, I doubt it would even be that much it wouldn't be worth it but the other thing that needs to be improved is the draining system for the turbos it's probably it's probably easier to see it from the other side where it was if we stand here it's a bit hard because there's light in all the wrong places you can see turbo charger and turbo charger and the sump and these are quite low quite close to this they are also quite a long way out and that is probably a bigger problem than the vertical height because as we were just talking about cornering forces oil in the sump here going left pulling up to a g a bit more than the g on corners uh, that oil is going to want to go that way and what happens to be there is the drain fitting for the turbocharger and a nice big a 10 sized hose going up to the turbo so the oil's going to go up the blimmin' hose and try and flood the turbo core. The other thing that happens, because these are draining in below the oil level in the sump, is if you have quite a lot of um, crankcase pressure in here, i.e. the rings are a little bit leaky, which we know we do have a bit of blow-by on this motor. That is why there's another one there, and that box doesn't have pistons in but there's a box kicking around with new pistons and a whole heap of other stuff. Um, what happens is it tries to force the oil out of the crankcase any way it can. So it's going to pressurize all this oil here. It's going to give it whatever the crankcase pressure is. It might be one PSI or two PSI. I don't know what it is. Never measured it. It'll be more than atmospheric. And it's going to try and find a way out. Again, it's going to try and push it out of this hose and push it against whatever pressure is inside the core of that turbo uh, it won't be higher than the pressure that's inside the core of that turbo but it will reduce the the difference if you know what i mean so that's not a good thing so how do we rectify that well, dry sump would be the solution wouldn't it that'd be easy that'd solve a whole lot of problems uh because we wouldn't have any because we wouldn't be running it because be thousands of dollars missing from a bank account we wouldn't be at the track so let's let's get the oil out of the turbo and get it down as low as possible and not have any oil at the base of these hoses and how do we do that 
we build a dry sump. A dry sump for the turbos. There you go, like this one I found earlier. And we got that flickery light issue, haven't we? So that goes in the car, oh, why not? It's not gonna be hard. Um, that's where a power steering rack normally lives, in the 350Z. Uh, and now we've got this lovely dry sump tank, like that, see? It, it sits in there, it's, it's beautiful, trust me, it's the right width and all sorts of things. This one here, next to my thumb, that's, that fitting's got a nice little cover on it, like that. So that only sucks right down near the bottom. See, you can't see through there anymore. You can see down there. Uh, the other two, obviously, those are the turbo drains. So they drain into there. We've got an electric suction pump, I'll show you in a second, that sucks out of that and puts it back into the sump. So that's awesome. There's a, uh, there's a good hole here, lots of space. It's over at the left of the car. It's as far forward as practical. I don't want to take it outside of the engine bay. Um, and quite low down, so C of G and all that is all favourable. Heavy though. If you can run your car without one of these, that's advisable because they're heavy. They cost money, there's a lot of plumbing, that costs money, it takes up space in the engine bay, and it's another point of failure. If, if this stops, we're stuffed. The turbos will flood straight away. Uh, that's why I've kind of made this as big as I can do. It might give us 30 seconds of running without flooding the turbos, maybe, if we're lucky. But you won't know, I'll have to put a warning on the dash or something, a, a light to come on to tell me the PDM says that this is drawing way too much current or, or stopped drawing current at which point we know it's, it's not going and then uh, we can have some sort of warning light perhaps on the dash I'm just really paranoid that it's another thing that can go wrong and just stop and then cause big problems which is why one of the reasons why I never fitted it originally never went that way which set up other problems so and the other one that I'm going to do I'll show you I'll show you in a second. I'm going to put, a, there's a third fitting to go onto here. It's another AN8 size fitting. And our oil catch can that is way up here. So there's already a drain fitting on that that goes to the outside of the car so I can drain what's in the catch can without spilling it in the engine bay. I'm going to come up a bit so we're not draining the entire thing. So anything heavy like water and stuff can sit at the bottom and all the crud in that. We'll come up about 50 mils from the bottom, we'll put another fitting and we'll put a hose and we'll bring that down through here and into our dry sump reservoir thingy dooflicky for the turbos. That gives it an air supply so it can suck the oil out of here and also what it will do is when we've put more than say 500 mils or less than that probably what are we talking 150 mils 200 mils in our oil catch can there we'll start pulling the stuff off the top which is hopefully relatively clean oil and putting it back into the motor to save us from pumping we won't have this issue when we rebuild the motor with the new pistons and all that sort of stuff but it'll save us from pumping all the oil out of the motor and into the catch can and then having oil pressure issues because there's not enough oil in the sump and your heavy braking and all the oil goes to what is the back of the motor but towards the front of the car but because of course Nissan designed this to go that way as forwards so all the sump was all nicely designed for that and we've gone put it in car backwards what an idiot so I'm literally at the point where I want to put that third fitting on here I, I don't want to drill and weld that fitting on without putting the top on this because this area here will get too thin and we'll run the risk of it being difficult to weld. So now put the top on this and then uh, put that fitting there in, put some mounts on it and then that's ready to go in the car. Then we have to build a mount for this and then we have to make the hoses and then we have to wire it all up. We've got to put a filter in line in theory. <laughs> I'm less worried about my engine damaging the scavenge pump than I am the scavenge pump damaging my engine based on the brand, not knocking it too much, but there are some better ones out there and are horrendously expensive, so it may actually end up with a bit of a rock catcher between, um, between here and the pump 
and then another one a real fine filter in between the pump and going back into the sump I just you know I don't want to throw a heap of brass and crap into my motor and kill it that way we'll kill it some other way death by years of abuse or trying to push it too far on the dyno or some sort of track incident death for the motor that is is uh that's that's cool I'm good with that that's fine shit happens excuse the French but uh death by cheap nasty parts causing carnage no 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 let's not do that that's no I don't want that cool so while you weren't looking I popped down the shops and um bought one of these um everybody has them on the shelf it's a good thing about working on a hero car that every man and his dog has you can just go and buy things boring uh that should be pretty good i'd i'd like to put a mount on this side but it's actually without going to here which i don't want to do it'll just look a bit yucky um oh, now i've convinced myself i may actually do that but i've just got two mounts on the front it's pretty rigid actually that's good enough it may move a little bit like that make a little bit of noise but we don't care that'll be fine uh looks like the hoses will probably reach exactly as it's been planned there's a leak there to fix Ooh, a little bit tight there and push that out of the way a bit more Heaps of room there, I'll just bend this up a little bit, get that out of the way, that's us, it'll be done, and then we can, um, we can work on these other hoses and a mount over here for the pump, we'll just go to the shop and get a bracket, um, there's heaps of brackets on, online for um, installing a Aeroflow scavenge pump in a K12 march <laughs> in the back here, mm. Mm -mm -mm. right here, good, good progress okay i'm done car's not done i'm done i've got come down with some sort of blooming cold or something mega sore throat runny nose yeah well, that's life telling me that it really doesn't want me to um participate in the upcoming superlap series which is fine because i don't want to anyway we're not going to um yeah, it looks quite fancy down here, doesn't it? I've, I've cheated. See, I've turned all the lights off and I've put that, that little glowy thing down there. So it all looks a little bit fancier. Um, right, we'll start. Can we see it? I can't get the, uh, I can't get the camera angle right for you. I'm looking at it, but I can't film it. Somewhere up there. There it is nearly in the middle of your screen is the fitting for the overflow from the catch can if things get too hectic up there it's probably easier to see it from here there you go if things get too hectic up there it'll come out it'll come through that hose that ends up being that hose at the top that's also our breather for our sump as i said earlier and and so the bigger hose that one there goes up to the turbo on each side there you go there you go done and i showed you this these are second hand fittings some of these so they're a little bit scratchy showed you this uh attachment that i did on the inside for this suction hose which goes through here i hope i put that on the inside yeah that's on the inside of the uh, aeroflow pump which i've actually rotated the, the housing around to get it in the orientation that i want and uh it comes out of there goes through that hose there which tucks around through everything and uh into the bottom of the sump not ideal you'd normally you'd pump that in up above the oil level up say in the middle of your screen there put a fitting there uh i don't want to take the sump apart to get it off to do all that sort of stuff so that's where it's going to be for now um as i've said a million times we've got a one of those and some other things so when we get a little bit further along we'll do something with that if we need to uh what i'm kind of thinking they stipulate it's real funny they stipulate never run this thing dry it's a scavenge pump and it probably will uh, see a lot of running without full oil flow through it so with this being 
basically oil level in the in the sump or, or slightly below the top of the oil level it's going to have oil in this hose all the way through to the pump so the gears will never be dry it can't be if the pump's running it's going to have some oil on it good oh well i'm going to go inside i'm like i said i'm done we'll see if there's enough of a video to smash this up and uh you'll be able to enjoy it if there is i'm not sure it's not really coming up as nice on the camera as what it looks in person needs a bit more of a clean up but it's going to be good our um our vectored thrust video i'll try not to blind you with the there's 7,000 views on that or something already. It's going crazy. So that's very funny. Right, Cheers for watching. This sicko is going inside to have a lie down. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and uh, think about being a member and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I was still thinking about a video we're doing for 404 era, the 404th video, some sort of era video. What are we doing? Better not be the dino session on on that. That that would not be good. That would not be good. There it is. Okay, all right, cheers, mate.